Hi, and welcome to Business in the New Normal. Uh, our podcast is focused on providing business owners, leaders, and managers with objective and balanced information that will support you in helping to make more informed decisions. Our intention with this weekly program is to help businesses not just survive, but thrive in this very challenging environment that we find ourselves all working in today. Uh, I'm Joseph Rosales, and this is my co-host, Ike Devji. How are you, Ike? Good, thank you. Good morning. Good. Good, great. Um, Ike is a highly experienced asset protection attorney uh, and specializes in protecting the wealth of high net worth individuals and companies. Uh, I like to sometimes affectionately call him uh, the bodyguard for people's wealth. Uh, and uh, we're going to have a chance to hear from Ike in a minute. Uh, I am the founder of a firm called the Performance Group of Arizona that specializes in helping businesses to optimize the performance of their people and their business uh, so they can reach higher results. Our guest today is Kathy Droz, uh, and hey, Kathy. And uh, we're going to uh, have an introduction of her in a moment. Uh, but uh, first, as I said, we always like to start the program uh, with a snapshot of what's going on in our particular areas of expertise. Uh, so Ike, uh, what's going on in your world? Well, thank you, Joseph. There are a few things that um, we are warning and reminding clients about this week, in addition to all the other things that we're dealing with at year end with lots of estate planning and business transfer issues, wealth transfer issues for people who are concerned about the effect of the election, of course. But there are a few things that are even more time sensitive and seasonal, one of which is we're reminding people to think carefully about their holiday parties. Um, there are businesses that are still doing that. And in addition to all of the usual caveats that we provide about doing it safely, doing it ethically, making it optional, controlling alcohol consumption, all the things that lead to liability for business owners and lawsuits come out of holiday parties every year. Mm -hmm. um, this year, we have the additional pressure and restriction of COVID-19 and the need for social distancing and safe practices and social gatherings. So many business owners are reconsidering how they're doing those parties or if they're doing them. And they're looking at reallocating the resources to other areas. Um, those you know, might include some other benefits. They might include pampering their employees in a different way. Um, you know, but there, there are other things you can do other than the traditional party. Speaking of party, it sounds like you have a party at, at your house with a, your, your puppy. <laughs> uh, you know, it is interesting because, um, you know, I, I've, I've always been a person that has my head up and on a swivel and my eyes wide open. I want to see what's coming and, and see how I can, you know, manage uh, whatever it is to the best effect and the least amount of uh, risk. And uh, you're right. I mean, some people are just putting their head down and saying, I'm going to do this party no matter what, because it brings me back to normal. And, and people are tired of not normal. And, um, and it's risky. It really is. Um, I know that uh, our, our son just got uh, exposed. We don't know if he's uh, going to get COVID or not, but he was at a um, he was at a, um, a dinner and had people over to his house for football and uh, everything else. And the next day he finds out that one of the people was, was, um, you know, tested positive. So now him and his whole, uh, group of, of guys that live with him and, and their families now have to make an adjustment or at least understand, you know, are we, are we at risk here? And, um, you know, we always talk about in business and the new normal, it doesn't really matter if you're left or right. What matters is, are you making the right choices for you and for those around you, for your families, for your employees, for your business, for your customers? Um, because, you know, th this virus doesn't really care if you're if you're Democrat or Republican, independent or, you know, uh, apolitical. Uh, it just knows that you're a living host and it wants to get in you and do whatever damage it can. And uh, I've personally have come across people recently who have become sick and almost died of a heart attack in one case. And, you know, it, it, it's different for everybody. And we understand that, you know, that, that it can be very divisive. Um, so, you know, it, it is interesting because like you, Ike, uh, my clients are all really uh, looking, how am I going to get set forward for a, a great 2021? Many people have written off 2020. And other people have thrived in 2020. 
and we've had those guests on. Every week we have a different guest and it's been amazing to see how people have pivoted, how they've grown stronger, how they've created new revenue streams for themselves. And that's really what we're about here is providing people with not just balanced information about what to do in their business, but what are other people doing in their business and how are people growing and thriving and, and pivoting into a whole new dimension of their business? And, and it's happening out there all over the place. And I'm excited to see that. And I'm excited to be part of that. We've pivoted. Uh, as people know, part of my story is back in March, we were launching a series of uh, leadership summits all over the country. And there were live events, 200 people. And it was, you know, five speakers and just a great, you know, plan. Bang. And in March 25th, when we were supposed to launch the first one here in Phoenix, they were canceled, and we have yet to uh, re, re, you know, reestablish those events. So, so everybody's pivoting. Kathy's pivoted. You pivoted, uh, and some people are busier than ever. My wife's in the mortgage business; she's busier than ever, and and other people are not. So, so as we move forward, you know, uh, my clients are, are looking at assessment, strategy, and action. Uh, that's the ASA in our business assessment. Where are you right now? What are your opportunities? Where could you go? What are the resources you need to get there? And then, you know, what's the strategy? I mean, you got to have a strategy today or else you're going to be sitting stuck in the middle of the road and that's not a place you want to be. And then the action and accountability. So, so we're seeing that as well. And, and I'm happy to be helping our clients with that. Um, and, you know, my contact information, Ike's contact information, Kathy, our guest contact information will be posted on a screen at the end of this uh, um, program. And uh, please reach out to us if we can help you in any way. So um, speaking of guests, I have the pleasure and, and, and I say this it, it, with with a, with a, a really soft place in my heart for Kathy Droz. We met uh, almost a year ago, uh, and quite interestingly, online she had made a post on something, and uh, I was so uh, you know taken with her with her approach and her post and what she does. And we both share a common background in the automotive sector, um, and so I reached out and we met and we well we were online for a while first, and then we finally met and and she she's amazing. I'm gonna I'm gonna read her bio just real quickly it's a short one but it, it's very involved but it's it's uh, we, we, we've we've got some pretty cool things to say about her uh, she's been in the automotive field for 20 years over 20 years and has been working with dealerships and dealer groups uh, to optimize their effectiveness at attracting female customers and creating the influences in their business that helps those customers buy and this isn't about selling this is about helping people decide to buy and she's the author of a book, A Woman's Guide to Buying Cars with Confidence and Street Smarts, and is the founder of Her Certified. And, uh, and she's going to talk a little bit more about that and the Her Academy. Kathy emphasizes the power of women and helps not only automotive dealerships, but also real estate companies, mortgage companies, and other businesses where a woman has an influence on a high ticket purchase. And that's a lot of different businesses if you think about it. Um, I have a special relationship with Kathy, and she recently joined me in, in, in the performance group, and we you know, combined our resources to provide an even wider range of services to businesses out there in the Phoenix uh, and Arizona market and beyond. So, uh, Kathy, welcome to the program. Thank you. Can I hire you for PR? <laughs> yeah. I'll do it for you, you forever. So, so you know, you have you, Kathy, you have an amazing background in automotive, and I noticed in your bio that you also were in advertising. You had an advertising firm for a while. Is that true? That is true. Um, I was a stay-at-home mom for twelve years. I was divorced. I uh, did not have a profession per se, uh, but I did some. I don't want to say modeling. I did some acting for an automotive group. And the next thing I knew is I felt like I could start my own marketing company because I saw they were missing the mark with women. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you read my book, you will see I started buying cars at, uh, with my dad at um, 10 years of age and at 17 bought a car by myself in the showroom. And they all thought they were on candid camera because this teenager's <laughs> our dad signed the check, but I did all the other. So I felt, you know, a little cocky. I felt, okay, I need a job. I've got to take care of this family, et cetera. And I decided I just opened an ad agency. I learned how to um, write copy to do commercials, television, radio, and started to realize I really liked working with 
automotive leaders or general managers, et cetera, which was not something that every woman thought was their dream job, working mm -hmm. with auto dealers. So the agency then, I realized that was my specialty. And I worked with all different um, auto dealerships in Arizona. Hmm. Very cool. You know, One in my perspective, yes. It, it, it's interesting because, you know, a big part of your focus is 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 helping dealerships understand how to have women buy from them uh, more uh, yes. and, and more readily. Um, is there a percentage of women or transactions that are influenced by women? I, I've heard it's pretty high. It is pretty high. Um, over the years, the percentage was 45% of women purchased. That is now much higher. It's about 55%. And then 85% influence, that has not changed, but you can see how the ratio has gone, you know, more and more women are now just buying cars. And quite interesting, during this pandemic, the uh, women, more women have been buying cars, they're more on the title. And it's because they are so used to navigating on the internet, uh, number one, Amazon buyers, they do more research. And so women are not intimidated now by purchasing online instead of going into the dealership. So that has increased the, the amount of women buying based on their online purchases. Interesting, yeah. It was so, so as much of 85% of transactions are influenced by a woman. And, influenced. and I can tell you, I, I am not buying a car. I am not buying a boat. I am not buying anything big ticket without my wife's input. Right. Uh, I don't necessarily need her approval. It, like she doesn't need my approval to buy something, but uh, but I, I she influences everything I buy because you know she's my partner. She's my wife. I've been married thirty four years, and that's just how it works. So so yeah, the, you know to 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 engage a female a woman in a transaction in a respectful, appropriate, productive, effective way is really a critically essential um, skill that many people have not developed. Is that true? True. That is true. Um, is, is that, uh, Joseph, was that a question or was that a, um, a it, statement that you just it, made? It, it's, really, it, it's really a I guess a statement, but maybe you can expand on it a little bit. What are some of the things that, that, that you see women um, motivates them or, or moves them toward being influenced to say yes to a transaction? What are some of those things? Well, in a dealership situation in particular, and I base so much on customer service, and Joseph, that is right in your wheelhouse. I've read your book. I know that you have been in the high-end uh, jewelry industry and other uh, very high-end uh, retail situations. So you know better than most men. No offense, Ike, I'm sure you know too. But um, most men, knowing what women want, and that's basically like the TV, like the movie uh, was, you know, what women want. It's a matter of women want customer service. They want to be treated a certain way. Thus, my business, her certified, H for honesty, E for excellence in customer service, and R for respect. And women want that in any situation. Sure. So when a woman walks into a dealership, it, and it has to do also with how men and women think differently. When a woman walks into a dealership, she is influenced by something completely different than the man. Mm -hmm. It could be the fragrance that is, is in the dealership or the lack of. It could be as simple as they're influenced if the salespeople are smoking and they throw their cigarette down before they walk in or how they approach you in the parking lot. Men are not, so nothing wrong with men. It's just that they're not, they're, they're thinking, I got to get in there and get look at that car that I want, and I got to hear the exhaust tunes, and I got to make sure the price is right. And therefore, they're not seeing what women are. And that influences women not only in the purchase, it influences them when they are asked to do a customer service. Um, they call it a CSI. It's basically rating your uh, transaction and how everything was. And so women will definitely. Uh, Go lower on the chart. If there's a one through 10, men will give a 10, women will give an eight for the same exact transaction. And it's because of something that bothered them. The cream over at the coffee station was spilled, you know? Yeah. You know, it's interesting. And I want to get your opinion in a second here, Ike, about this, because you're a man and you, 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 you see things in your business as well all the time that, 
that women um, have a different maybe perspective on. And, and having been in retail for a, a big majority of my life, um, you're right. Um, the, the, the music in the background, the, the smells, the touch, the, 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 the words that people use, the way people are greeted, the way people are introduced to the process, the way they're walked through the car, all of these things make a difference. Uh, in my book, Customer Service is a Contact Sport, which I wrote back in 2005, we talk about everything makes an impact. Everything makes an impact. It's either positive or negative or non. And you get to choose whether it's a positive impact, a negative impact, or a non-impact. And a non-impact to me is like an is, is a negative. You had an opportunity to impress or impact somebody in a positive way and you didn't do it. So so you know, it's not about the transaction, hunt and gather and, and kill. You know, men are hunters and gatherers, and we go get it. Let's go get that deal. And women can be, you know, aggressive and tough too, but yes. but there's a subtlety to it. There's a there's a respect to it. There's a there's a feeling. And, and by the way, many men, and what, we're, what you're talking about and what you teach in your book, it applies for men as well, because there are a lot of men who are very discriminating, who really do care about all the things. I care about the cream being spilled. I care mm -hmm. about people, you know, the, what we call the lot lizards, people jumping on me as soon as I get out of my car. Hey, how can I help you? It's like, no, no, don't, don't do that. We, back up a little bit. Get me get a little space. I'm coming. I, I drove onto your lot. I'm here. You got me. But don't jump on me because then it's it is no thank you. I'm just looking. And then you got to go through all the mental gyrations that people go through to get to the next point. So like what what are your thoughts on this so far? Well, I think it's important to get that buy-in um, from both parties, especially um, you know, if if we're talking about a couple and some of the comments yeah. you made were in that context. I also think that I work with a lot of very successful women as my clients, whether they're entrepreneurs or business owners or professionals like physicians or other attorneys. So, you know, those, those ladies that I deal with have very definite ideas about what they want, uh, about service, about value, about price. And it sounds to me, based on some of the things that to Kathy said, that perhaps a lot of this moving online has maybe leveled the playing field a little bit mm -hmm. because I think I know statistically, Kathy, and correct me if I'm wrong here, but I've read for years that women who go into, for instance, auto dealerships don't get the same deals that men get, that they refuse in many cases with, and I know that you know you of course are the ultra educated professional buyer and you train other women to be the same, but the average woman walking into a dealership won't get the same deal and in some cases won't even get the same finance offers based on some of the things that I've read. Um, and it's not because they're not educated. It's because the seller doesn't feel the need to make the deal. They feel mm -hmm. that they can squeeze this buyer a little bit more. Mm -hmm. And I think that may have been true um, for past generations, but uh, the ladies that I deal with sure, sure as heck aren't, aren't in that boat and yeah. they're not willing to accept that disparity. Um, you know, so I, I, I think that's interesting. Would you, am I correct in, in what I've read, Kathy, about, you, are, you know, the, the two people walk in one, one's male, one's female, same credit, same car, the man gets a better deal. Has that been, has that been the historical pattern? That has been the historical pattern, which I'm glad you brought that up. Part of the reason for writing my book is about the negotiation. You don't need to be an assertive New Yorker like me, <laughs> but if you do your research, like in anything, you do your research, you, you know, um, and now with the internet, oh my goodness, that is so easy. You know what your neighbor paid for the same vehicle and you have something to really negotiate with. Women are more, um, intimidated by the negotiation process until later years. Like you're, you're gonna get, you made a very good point and I will not mention her name. Uh, former vice president of a large bank here called me and said she did not wanna go, she wanted to buy a certain vehicle, but although she was the vice president of this large bank and went through business school, 
She is intimidated when it comes to buying a vehicle, nothing else, only buying a vehicle. I asked if A, I would go with her or uh, could she have an extra copy of the book? So there are very strong women out there that are still are so afraid of the, of the whole bubble that we've made this auto dealers that they're, that they're bad people. It is the negotiation. It is knowing what you deserve. And I have no problem going in and if a salesperson says, you know, gives me a certain price, I'm not afraid to negotiate based on knowledge, not on aggressiveness or just being a, you know, mean. But I think your woman that is coming to you, Ike, for sure, is certainly not a leader because she was afraid to negotiate. I mean, she definitely knows what she wants. There's no doubt about it. Well, it's interesting. You changing. I'm sorry. I, I, just, I just was sitting here listening to the two of you, and I'm thinking that, you know, this this intimidation, founded or unfounded, um, can easily be counteracted by having information. Lack exactly. of information will cause a certain amount of intimidation, justifiably exactly. so, because you don't know. You have no idea. Mm -hmm. You see what's on the sticker, and now you negotiate from there versus doing your research, getting the getting their true pricing from on the vehicle or the real estate, you know, the the property or the mortgage that you're looking for or whatever it is, and and understanding as a consumer, male or female, how to negotiate based on information, and not based on personality. Mm -hmm. And, right. and then you, you level the playing field, which is what you said earlier, that with the internet and with people buying online, it's really, it's really leveled the playing field a lot. Um, I think I shared with you, Kathy, that I just bought a, a, a car three months ago. I did it completely mm -hmm. online. There was no negotiating. There was, and I've, I've been in the car business my entire adult life. And I, I, I mean, I teach people how to sell cars and how to negotiate, uh, you know, with the customer. I mean, I teach all that. So I understand the process. It was so refreshing to not have to deal with that. I didn't have to deal with, I just looked at the car, looked at the price, compared it online, put my order in, they delivered the car and bang, it was done. I picked it up and drove out and smiling. And it was one of the best transactions I've ever had. And that is, we're going to talk in a little bit about how things are changing in the industry mm -hmm. and other industries. But um, it's really interesting because, you know, knowledge is power if you have access to it. And it's limiting if you don't have access to it. And in your book, you, you teach that. You teach women, people, consumers, how to be more prepared to go in and negotiate, how to, how to present the information, how to overcome the objections that are, that are given to you. Because it, is, it, is, it is, can be a little bit intimidating for people that don't do it very often or have never done it before. And uh, I think your book, and, and I, I think you're going to hold up a copy for, uh, of it. Uh, I'm sure you have a copy. Sure. Of Let me just roll over here and get one. <laughs> and, 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 you know, there it is. You know, it, it's, it's a great, ah. book, a great cover. And, and your, your signature red heels. I love that. You, you, My branding, important. Uh, that's the advertising background. So, so, so tell me just a little bit more oh. about, about how, how this whole strategy um, applies to other businesses as well, because I know you and I are talking about other businesses, again, real estate companies, mortgage companies, uh, RV sales, boat sales, anything that's high ticket is it, it, got a real opportunity for people to focus more purposely on, on attracting more women and more discriminating customers. Right. and or women. Uh, so any, anything more to add to that? Uh, about no, just that, uh, uh, and, and this is a point I wanted to make. I, you'll, I try uh, to really drill down on a subject that I find extremely interesting. And we'll talk about the new normal and how I see things changing there. But most of my research I have done. I'm not going to Wikipedia or someone else's book. Uh, living and breathing in the organization, my ad agency was inside a Chevrolet dealership. I rented space there. So my uh, was, was hands-on. The gentleman who owned the seven franchises at the time, it is now owned by Berkshire Hathaway, he believed that women, we're going back 20 years, he believed that women were the decision makers. So I was actually, Friday mornings, I did the sales meetings, not just the advertising. So early on, I was trying to teach 
men in particular, we didn't have a, a very, we had very few females on board in the franchises, teaching men in general how to um, speak to women. I mean, and we're going back 20 years, how to speak to them, not to, uh, I would have men raise their hand and go, well, I can make a sale easily. I just tell the woman that I love the color of her eyes <laughs> and I love the shoes she's wearing. I go, okay, and how's that working for you? Or they would think nothing of asking someone out on a test drive. They would ask. Wow. These are the kind of things early on that I saw. And, you know, I've had some other things. I sat on a board for harassment. And many times I was on the side of the male, not the female. So, I mean, I really think I see both sides. Yeah. Joseph, one of the things I wanted to say about the book is it is not putting dealers down. I give both sides. I let the man or woman reading the book know why certain things do happen. What doc fees really are, D-O-C. I had a woman tell me that she thought it stood for uh, that hit, they had to pay their doctor some kind of amount. And I'm going, okay, it's the judgment fees. It's, and it is not, as a lawyer, you know this, I, in the state of Arizona, doc fees are determined by the individual dealership. They are not um, mandated like in other states where there's a flat fee of let's say $800. And what you're doing is paying for the clerk that is doing your titling, so to speak. Um, a dealership can charge what they want, unless that has changed, I and I'm not aware of it. But it's, it's a complicated yet easy way to buy a car if you know. So I reveal that in the book. It's, yeah. you know. You know, I found something interesting when I read your book the first time through that you're educating consumers about how to effectively purchase a vehicle from a dealership. But the reverse of that is, as the dealership reads that, and you've done a lot of training with her certified in her academy on that, the dealer then gets a, a clear understanding of what the consumer is now thinking, and then they can prepare their presentation or their response in a positive professional way to, mm -hmm. to, to, to manage that differently. Because you know, it's you need to know what your what your what your customers are thinking before they walk in the door, and not just Absolutely. do what you think is the appropriate thing all the time. But it's 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 really a telling uh, story when you look at it from both sides of the equation, as as you said. It really it really is super super helpful, and Thank every you. industry could 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 benefit from understanding both sides of the equation. So when they're meeting in the middle, it's a very collaborative purchase. It really is. Oh, it is. It is. If, if both know. So uh, Superstition Springs Lexus, which is a her certified dealership, every employee that comes on board is given a copy of the book to your exactly what you were saying. Some don't utilize the book if it comes with it. Um, they may give it to someone as they're leaving the dealership and maybe they didn't purchase and they put their business card in it. Hmm. But quite honestly, you are right when you say the employee should so they know what the consumer is thinking. And then, of course, what you and I do with our teaching is then we allow the sales team, fixed ops, uh, receptionist to get in on the training so they understand what women do want, in my case, what women want, and they're able to understand how to uh, have a better um, rapport and transaction right. with them. Really is a cultural thing, don't you think? It's a, it's a dealership culture that evolves yes. and develops where everyone uh, is, is, is engaged at a higher level. And it's not just, yeah, well, you know, yeah, you here to buy today? I've seen that one a million times. Correct. Yeah, you here to buy today or are you just looking? And they're trying to separate the lookers from the, from, from the not. And um, it's and what's always- the, What's the response that almost everybody's gonna give to that in order to be left just, alone? Just looking. Right. That's that's yeah, and that that's the wrong right. that's the wrong way to start the transaction to start the relationship. Because it's really people do buy it from people, and they buy from people they like. If I don't like you, I'm not buying. And most people don't have the guts to say, "Can you get me another salesperson?" Right, and that's what I recommend. So each yeah. chapter, Ike ends with, "If I owned a dealership, as in if Kathy Droz or a woman owned a dealership, and that certainly did get the attention of manufacturers, but." The auto business is one that, you know, when we talk about the new normal, they're not going to go out of business. They're just going to pivot just like the rest of us in, in different manner. But I don't see them going away any uh, anytime soon. 
Yeah. Uh, what's, what's so interesting about you is that you're teaching both consumers to be better buyers and you're teaching mm. dealers and other businesses to be better sellers. Yep. And hopefully- Oh, that, I love that. Thank that, you. That, that, that helps everybody. And I know that a big part of what you do and, and part of your online um, material and content that you've produced is like what over 500 test drives of new new vehicles that you've done um, yes I've, i'm number 572 this week wow. wow that that is a lot and that that sounds like a lot of fun what are people learning from your test drives and for instance i know consumers are going to learn certain things that you are looking for and pointing out and obviously the sellers are probably learning some things from you on that as well as to what to do, what to feature, what to emphasize, right? Uh, yes, I thank you. And I, I don't believe that they're based on what a woman wants in a vehicle because I'd like to think that I am a very diverse woman. So I play golf. So I'm very interested in what goes in the trunks. Can I fit all the, the golf clubs in there? Um, I have nine grandchildren. Car seats have been a big part of their life and still are. I have, um, at one point I had a travel trailer, a, a vintage travel trailer. So it was very important that I could tow. So I think I have a, a broader uh, look at things, not just what they always, you know, think a woman, I'm going to worry about the groceries and um, putting kids so uh, soccer balls in the back. So most women are very diverse now in what they do. And therefore, I want to be able to appeal to both men and women. But because I am the female doing the review, it um, makes a process. They're not going on to a typical um, if you go on YouTube and you were to put in, like I just drove the LC 500 convertible last week. So you put that into YouTube, news that'll come up, they'll have way more people that are looking at it, but it's more technical maybe. And it's generally a man and he's talking about the, the engine and the, the, you know, you name it that has to do mechanically, but I handle more about how the lifestyle how it can handle your family. There's not a lot of narrative from me, I introduce it. But what I find is that then a dealership in the answer to part B is if they have a loop, a TV loop at their dealership, they are asking for my material to go up there so that the consumer who's already in the dealership can see that a real person, me, is reviewing a vehicle based on could be anything it could be on you know you'll find me with pumpkins in the around halloween mm -hmm. and the coming i can fit more mm -hmm. grandchildren and i just did a minivan where i had my granddaughter actually do the video with me so i'm going after generation z she's 10 years old she knows more about the minivan than i did so mm -hmm. i my content is appealing to men and women and and Joseph knows. So on a LinkedIn, when I do a review, I will get 1500 likes. Um, and many of them are auto dealer principals and other men. They're mostly men and they appreciate it. So um, that's my content. And that, that makes a lot of sense. I mean, even in, in what you were saying about approaching the car and your reviews as a driver, not a woman, um, because those gender roles have certainly changed, right? It's not just women who are hassling with a car seat. Um, Correct. Many of dads are doing those exact same things. It's not just men who are playing golf, uh, especially here in Arizona. I mean, a lot that we have a, a very large number of women who play golf here. Or So that the things that you're saying make a lot of sense. Where do we find these hundreds of reviews? Where's a good place for people to see the content? A, a good place is on my website, which is hercertified.com under the tab reviews. And then YouTube, which I don't try and get subscribers to Ike, but I, um, I'm on YouTube under Her Certified. And Great. there's a whole bunch there and they're, they're easy. They're, they're, under, they're under two minutes and you get the idea. Not a lot of chit chat, a lot of photos. Great to see that the dealers are using your your videos 
some of them. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and I think that that helps people picture themselves in the car um, in a way that a traditional ad, you know, a slickly produced ad that has long shots of a car at sunset is pretty, but it doesn't really give you an idea of what it's like to spend time in the car. Right. That that's very important. And I think that's part of the pivot that we're seeing dealers engage in. Now, since March, what are some of the other changes that you are seeing auto dealers make um, to their business model and how they're doing businesses or, or any business? I know that auto dealers aren't your only clients, but what are some of these changes that you're seeing that are helping them move forward and succeed um, at a time where a lot of people are afraid to go shopping? Right, right. So I think in the beginning, and Joseph knows this because we talked about it, in the beginning, there were dealers that were prepared. And by that, I mean, um, in particular, a dealer I went to in December of last year, and uh, I stay up on the industry. So I had met with someone from Carvana. So I had suggested to this dealer, I said, I hope your dealer group is thinking ahead. I think that uh, online, um, although Carvana is used vehicles, I said to a new car dealer, I think that the future is going to be the online selling. Have you thought about it? And he's, this was in December. He said, yes, as of January, our group is looking to develop a more um, friendly uh, version and we're working on it right now. That was in December. So when March hit, they were somewhat prepared, but really went into a whole different mode because they were also dealing with um, lack of inventory from the manufacturers. Uh, they had to furlough some of their people, which was devastating in most cases. And they had to figure out a way to keep their most profitable department, which is fixed ops. And that's the service department, because that's where the money is. And that's where they did not want to lose it immediately. So they really went into high gear in their marketing and their advertising. And I have to say that each one took it differently. There was a dealership I thought was very smart. They immediately did a TV commercial. And what they talked about with the American flag flying is we care about you and your health. That's what they did. And I thought, you know what? We know you're really trying to sell those Fords. We know that this is, but it struck home. And then they did a billboard with this general manager's photo on there, repeating what he had said on TV. We care about you, American flag flying. It was extremely successful. And they were the first ones that reached out uh, publicly like that in using more of a, a print advertising in the media. The others, didn't know what they were going to do next. I had a bunch of ideas. Um, I shared with some of them. And then uh, Joseph was, he told me about an incident and I don't want to bring any personal into it, but an incident where a man and a woman went into a dealership and they were not wearing masks and the woman walked out. So when I brought that to the attention of the dealership itself and others, they were like, we had no idea that that's in particular women that they were so offended, they did not want to buy a vehicle there. They immediately, these both dealers went out and ordered a thousand masks. And I said, make sure that your name is on it. Make sure because now everyone's a walking billboard now. That's the other end of marketing. And they're like, oh yeah. So it it's, they were open to ideas. The um, NADA immediately got on them with the CBC, well, the CDC, you know, what they needed to do. I say communicate. Women want, in particular, communication. So, Ike, you own a dealership. I need your um, content, what you put up on social media, to talk about how you're protecting the customers. And then, of course, giving them another alternative, which is now all this online uh, ordering. And they've all given it little different names, like, um, there's a Toyota dealership, they call it Dash, D-A-S-H. Um, and they're trying to get their customers back and they really want them to bring in their vehicles for repair or even an oil change. And they'll go pick it up and they're, they're still going through it. Right. So, 
Yeah, it, it is very interesting that that across the board, we're seeing low contact to no contact services um, becoming very important to many industries, including yes. the, the car industry and, and, and houses. I mean, you know, that whole no contact and low contact right. in, in, in viewing a house. Um, and, 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 and those people that, that don't make this transition, that don't make this evolution are going to continue to be behind the curve. Absolutely. And, and it was interesting because right after the pandemic hit, we saw car dealerships setting record numbers. Oh, yes. It was, it was, it w- it was nuts, but that is now starting to run its course. Now we're starting to see the other side of the hill. The inventory is still an issue for many dealerships. Uh, consumers with, with the economy uh, being a little bit sketchy in many cases for many people. There, you know, Some people went and bought a car because they knew they were going to be out of a job in three months, and they are. And now we have that impact. So there's a lot of things that are happening. And, and, and you know, I know that, um, you know, what is it that you see that's common in a, in a business that has allowed them to pivot quicker and more effectively than other businesses in the same industry? What, what is that common thing that, that causes a business to be able to pivot and move forward uh, more successfully than a business that doesn't have well, the same Well, Joseph, you know, it's the leader. <laughs> it's the leader in you. <laughs> Um, not to plug your book or anything. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> it, 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 who sits at the, um, who's the decision maker? Mm-hmm. I can only say in the automotive industry, uh, the mom and pops where there was um, one owner passed it down to his sons and daughters and they only had one uh, dealership. Those days are gone. They, most of them have been bought out by larger organizations, uh, you know, and and certainly I can refer to Berkshire Hathaway, which is Warren Buffett, who owns 125 throughout the country. So this is what's happening. But the leader, the person, and and you bring a good point. I will go into a dealership where I believe that they could use my help, and that they should go through the training, and that I can increase sales to women, and I can also increase their customer service index. And yet they um, say. Oh, I don't need it. We do, we do, we do great with women. And I go, well, have you looked at your um, Yelp? <laughs> have you looked at your Yelp <laughs> lately? Um, I beg to differ. And um, then I will look around that dealership and I will see how they lead. And and Joseph, I don't know. Mm-hmm. I pretty much can tell in a conversation. Yep. This is the dealership I want my name on. If I want this to be her certified and advertise and care about them. Yeah. Uh, so I have turned down dealerships, and yet Joseph and I can offer consulting um, for a period of time as well, and maybe bring them up to to where they need to be. But right. definitely the person in charge, uh, when they sit in on my meetings, when they sit in on a training session, and they're taking notes, I know I've got the right person. Right. And then the one that says, uh, "Just you know, just go and train. You know, they'll fill me in later." That's not going to work. It's, it Have never certified works. Certified businesses other than auto dealers? Um, I know you that, work with other businesses, but do you provide that same sort of formal certification? I'm literally working on that right now um, I, because I have been asked by other organizations and services, you know, how do I become her certified? Uh, we're an all-female organization. We cater to women and it could be as easy as a, a small boutique, et cetera. I just, um, with auto dealers, I obviously like real estate, when you have two things that are um, the most expensive things you may be buying in your lifetime, Mm -hmm. I am able to charge an auto dealer way more than I am uh, Mary's Cupcake Shop down the street. So I'm working on how I can work maybe in partnership. Uh, Joseph and I are trying to think how we can best serve both ends of the the businesses and keep my her certified. I want to be that JD Powers. I want to be that good housekeeping seal. So right. you know, I have to think that out. But I'm I'm more than happy to certify you, um, Ike. <laughs> 
Well, that, that's, that's amazing. And, and we're coming up on our, on our time. So I want to, I want to honor everybody's time that's listening and our time as, as, as presenting here. But um, so, so I guess what I'd like to ask you to finish up is, so, so what do you see going forward in business, in, in dealerships, in real estate companies in mortgage companies and other high ticket businesses? What do you see? Do you, you, you see, you see, Real positive things, some negative things. I mean, what's your prognostication for you know twenty twenty one and and beyond? Well, I do I do see. I'm always positive, and I'm always happy to uh, when a small business has called during this pandemic and said, um, "How do I pivot when I have a shop?" And let's say a cupcake shop. Okay, so my answer is things are going online, so you better learn quickly how to sell your cupcakes online and how you're going to do. Them and did that with my daughter and son-in-law's coffee shop, which just went dead downtown uh, once the pandemic hit. And I thought, you know, you roast your own beans. Uh, let's start selling your beans online. Let's start, um, let's start delivering them, etc. And that same grandchild did a video on behalf of her father and mother and sent it out and got orders to do that. <laughs> Thank you. It's gonna still gonna be customer service. Sure. But put a thank you note in a 10 year old handwriting in each one of those uh, pounds of coffee that was sent out. And when the deliveries were made locally, she mm -hmm. delivered them to the door all with a thank you card. So mm -hmm. the repeat business. So I'm looking at ways that a small business uh, can take it online. Not everyone can, my son cannot. He's in the event business. He builds um, trade show uh, displays and event business is over, but he himself would, you know, is trying to pivot into something else. Yeah. So I think the auto industry is going to continue to be online. I think that we, I like to touch and feel. So there's always going to be a, I think a smaller model. I think that these large dealerships, you know, 60,000 square feet uh, of these large dealerships are going to have to find a way to the real estate is going to become less and less. Yeah. So, there'll be three i think there'll be hybrid version there'll be yes come back into the dealership everything with a mask we're on target and then there's going to be half in the dealership and then the rest done online certainly financing can be done all online and mm -hmm. then third will be completely contactless um but always remember it is their service department that pays the bills right. so right now they need a lot of drivers to go and come back yeah yeah, so it is interesting because I, th I think we saw a video by our friend Nicole Ruiz at, yes, uh, excellent. Uh, at um, Carmen uh, mm -hmm. that uh, filmed a guy working, uh, you know, a service technician working on a car on the street, basically. In and Chicago. In, in Chicago, mm -hmm. and he's been doing it for 20 years, you said. And, and, and but now it's going to become much more prevalent because it's working from home, especially I don't have to go anywhere. I, my car's in my driveway, come and fix it. Bang. Here's my, here's my credit card and be done. And that's going to be even more so convenience, safety, customer service, certainly um, communication, uh, all of those things have become even more important now because it's not just let them walk in the door and, 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 and pressure them into selling or, or, or give them a great deal and they buy it. There's so many other elements now that 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 are at play so um i i, I you've covered a tremendous amount of information with us today in just a, a few short minutes uh i know that um there's so much more how how can people reach out to you how would you like to have people reach out to you we're going to post it at the end of the program but oh uh, gosh i mean i'm not you know go to uh kathy with a c at hercertified.com you know email me there's mm -hmm. Not a problem with that. The website, as I asked me earlier, is hercertified.com. Mm -hmm. Social media is hercertified and also Kathy Droz. So um, I'm all over. And, um, but I really am, I don't know how I want to say, I, there is much more, but I think that we'll save that, Joseph, for when we go in and we uh, teach slash train um, some new dealers on the new normal. Yeah. I, I'm going to be so rich someday. I'm going to be able to um, come and have you uh, assess my assets. <laughs> Great. Okay. Like anything, anything more for Kathy before we uh, come to our end? You no, know, Kathy has so much information to share, and, and uh, I think we could probably go on for hours. But I think we've we've done a, a good job today at kind of getting some of the basics in and. 
helping business owners understand how important it is to uh, intentionally and respectfully include women in uh, in what they're doing and how they're operating their business and, and how they're marketing to them. So thank you, Kathy. Thank, thank you. you. And, and I'm sorry, Joseph. Yes, mortgage, real estate, without a doubt, um, the same premise of women, but so many women are in real estate and mortgage brokerage mm -hmm homes now, you know, I think that's certainly to the advantage of the industry. Yeah. Cool. Thank you. Well, listen, thank you again, Kathy thank Rose, for, for, for being on the program today and sharing literally decades of experience in helping businesses to, to, to attract and to present and develop not just female customers, but any discriminating customer, uh, man, woman, uh, and, and, and it's interesting because so many of these, these, these ideas and these processes really resonate with businesses once they hear them. And, mm -hmm. and as, as you said, our first step is always assessment. If you're interested in having Kathy or myself look at your business, strategize with you uh, after assessing and giving you some ideas of how you can move forward, that's what we do. Uh, the, mm -hmm. the training slash learning, those are all things that we do. Um, and, and we've been doing this a long time and we're really gifted at it. And, and I can speak on my behalf and on hers both. Um, but for now, I'd just like to encourage you as well to uh, visit Business in the New Normal on YouTube. Uh, on our LinkedIn um, uh, uh, connection, we have Business in a New Normal, a site that uh, Ike is very involved in putting together. He puts in information almost every day, uh, at least a few times a week, to, to, to share valuable information with our listeners and our readers to, to, to make more balanced decisions, to be more informed. Because there's, there's so much misinformation and disinformation and lack of information. You really want to be informed if you want to be balanced in business and in, in, in your approach mm -hmm. to life today. So uh, with that, I'm going to say, again, thank you to Kathy Droz. Uh, thank, thank you, you. To, to Ike uh, for, for being here and, uh, and for uh, the, just great inspiration today. Uh, visit us uh, every week. Every week, there's a new episode, and we have a lot of amazing different guests. Uh, so Business in a New Normal on YouTube, on LinkedIn in on Facebook uh, here uh, and uh, with that I will say uh, goodbye for this week I'm Joseph Rosales for Ike Devji uh, and um, thank you so much have a great afternoon and a great week bye-bye